This week on The Travel Detective. In our post-9-11 world, the focus of this country has been on making airports safer. But what about some of the softer targets, like hotels? And how safe is your hotel from a terrorist attack? That's this week's cover story. When American flagged hotels are located abroad, they are beacons for attackers. When it comes to concerns about safety and security, most people immediately think of airlines and airports. I get that. But there's another area that's very vulnerable. In fact, most security experts will tell you it's an incredibly soft target. Hotels. Take a look at any U.S. hotel. How many people are filtering in and out of the lobby? How many entrances are there to this hotel? There are restaurants, meeting areas, restrooms, and about a dozen other spaces where anyone can enter and exit without being challenged. And can you name a single hotel where a bellman won't take a $5 tip just to store your bag? And that's a huge problem, because today, many bombs are actually set off remotely with a cell phone. Well, hotels are dangerous for a number of reasons. Number one, when American-flagged hotels are located abroad, they are beacons for attackers. They are very visible and apparent and high-profile opportunities for someone to attack who wants to draw a lot of attention to that attack and direct their animus towards the U.S. The second issue is hotels, by their very nature, are occupied by people, transient people. People are coming in and out all the time. The bottom line is that hotels don't just rely on paying guests to make their money. They also depend on non-guests who eat at their restaurants, drink at their bars, and come in for conferences and events. These visitors generally have no screening whatsoever. Even hotels in countries with high security measures continue to be hit. November 2008, 10 coordinated attacks struck across the city of Mumbai in India, including the Oberoi Trident and Taj Mahal Palace and Tower, killing at least 173 people and wounding at least 308. July 2009, terrorists struck the JW Marriott and the Ritz-Carlton in Jakarta, killing nine and wounding 50. Those were preceded by attacks in Africa, Asia, and the Middle East. Terrorism is a very low probability event, and it's much more difficult to plan for. And even hotels which had aggressive security programs, you know, like the Marriott in Jakarta, I mean, even they were victims of really significant terrorist threats. The nature of hotels, the nature of the way in which they're designed, uh, and the things that go on there uh, make it very difficult to adequately secure them. And to be honest with you, to economically secure them. Room rates are going to double because we have a little army outside of the Oberoi, for example. That hotel's going to go out of business. People are going to take the risk of going to another hotel. A study from one intelligence firm, Stratfor, found that in the eight years after 9-11, there were 62 attacks in 20 countries, compared to 30 attacks in 15 countries in the eight years before 9-11. That's more than double. And the terrorist methods have become deadlier. The number of injuries and fatalities in hotel attacks have skyrocketed since 9-11. And yet, with necessity being the mother of invention, there have been some incredible innovations in the fight against terrorism. A Massachusetts-based company called Berry Plastics, in partnership with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, has developed blast-proof wallpaper. How does it work? It's a Kevlar-like material sandwiched between sheets of elastic polymer wrap that bonds so tightly that it actually helps walls keep their shape after blast waves. It's literally a peel-and-stick technology that's already in use at military installations and embassies around the world. And yet, the number of U.S. hotels that have inquired or even purchased the product? Zero. In most cases, hotel security continues to be defined in two ways, theft prevention and policing prostitution. But hotel security that actually anticipates or prevents terrorism is not really part of most hotel security protocol. And the reason why hotels tell you they don't do that is because they don't want to inconvenience guests. In the hotel industry, there's a policy for everything, including how your bed is made. But there are no minimum standards in terms of security. The sad truth is that until there's a hotel attack on U.S. soil, hotel owners and operators aren't willing to spend any money on improving security and deterrence. In the hospitality business, few hotels want to scare away guests with x-raying bags, metal detectors, and armed security guards. The translation? They don't want to become the airport experience. Well, check in and get out in the same way when, when people go to an airport. Uh, you know, check in and get past the magnetometer as soon as possible. Uh, in hotels, sure, we advise clients right away. 
you know, check in quickly and don't uh, not only don't loiter in the lobby, but don't use the public accommodations that are there. Find another restaurant, find another bar, find some place which is more difficult to get to or at least give you more cover. However, there are red flags to watch out for, and they're worth reporting to the hotel. Any entrances and exits unmanned by security personnel, unattended bags in the lobby or other public spaces. If multiple deliveries are being made to one guest in a single room, if there are vehicles parked in front of the lobby for an extended period of time. And remember those suicide bombers in Jakarta? That's why you want to report if there's a do not disturb sign on any door for more than eight hours. And there are a few other things you can do. Look for hotels with long gated driveways that adds additional layers of security. Or ask if the hotel actually inspects arriving cars, looks in the trunk, under the hood. And if you're still concerned, get a room in the back of the hotel, because history indicates that most terrorist attacks happen at the front.